Hello chess fans, this is Chess Gold with another famous chess position from the history of the game. A position you must know if you call yourself a true, a true chess fan. This is, an, this is one that even inspired literature and I will tell you more about that later. This is a position from the World Championship match between World Champion Anatoly Karpov and challenger Garry Kasparov played on the 15th of October in 1985. It's the 16th game of the match. The score was 7.5, 7.5 before this game and Kasparov crushed Karpov like he was never crushed before in this game. And this is the position, the crucial position in that game when it all started. It's a Sicilian opening and Kasparov had played the move that I'll show you, which is d6, d5, in game 12 as well, and then it um, they made a draw, and Kasparov repeated this experiment, which was later described as a as an attack with a toy gun, because it's a it's a losing it, it's losing, but in this case Kasparov won one of his most famous games with it. It's a pawn sacrifice because Karpov took the pawn and e takes d5, e takes d5. White has won a pawn. But black has compensation. Knight b4, bishop e2, bishop c5, and Karpov castled. What he should have played is what he played the year after in his game against Grandmaster John van der, Wiel, van der Wiel from the Netherlands in the, the Brussels tournament in Swift. Uh, the Swift tournament, Swift was the sponsor, and the tournament was held in Brussels in 1986 and that's where Karpov played the refutation uh, of Black's pawn sacrifice even though uh, that game against van der Wiel also ended in a draw. But that was not because of the opening. Uh, Karpov was, was clearly better after the opening. What he should have played here, instead of castling, which gives black good compensation for the pawn, he should have played bishop e3. And let me take a little step um, to, I talked about literature, uh, Tinka Bay, Dutch writer and chess writer, uh, wrote a short story in which this game featured. It's called Master Jacobson, it's on the internet as well, and let me um, read a little bit about this position after bishop e3, which Karpov should have played. The envelope still in, in his hand, Jacobson felt disappointed. Bishop e3 was a patzer move. He still remembered looking at it for a second at the time, probably like everyone else. But black just exchanges on e3 and white has an ugly weakness. So here it was, he almost felt cheated now that it was clear he had not been cheated. He had indeed been wasting his time on a school child, because this game that Master Jacobson plays was, uh, is against a, a school child, a correspondence game. Then later he says, and suddenly he saw it, if black captured a bishop, white would not recapture but would win the black knight with a Swischenschach. And then all of black's pugnacious pieces would suddenly be 10 years older and he would simply be a pawn down. So let me show you what uh, was referred to there. So bishop e3 should have been played, and then if bishop takes e3, f takes e3, there is this uh, this weakness that the writer talked about and Master Jacobson talked about. And um, black has full compensation for the pawn. But instead of f takes e3, there's the Trishenschach, the queen a4 check. And this was what happened in Karpov von der Wiel the year after. Knight e7 to seal the check, and then white takes the knight instead of the bishop e3, takes the knight on b4. And after bishop c5, queen e4, check, king f8, white has a great position and there was no compensation for the pawn for black. As I said later, the game ended in a draw anyway. But this was the, the refutation also acknowledged by Kasparov, the refutation of his idea which started with eight d6, d5, the pawn sacrifice. Well, in the game, Karpov Kasparov, Karpov castled, 
the amazing thing was that he later revealed that after the game when he uh, lost in a crushing way he he uh, his one of his seconds came to him and told him about a bishop e3 move so they knew about it uh, already but forgot to tell him or uh, it, well the communicate there was something wrong with the communication in Carpos camp because he at the board uh, was not aware of the bishop e3 refutation so here black is nice compensation and he built and built and built and deprived Karpov of space and of everything and won in a crushing way. This is the final position after rook e8 to e1 check and it's made in two. White can only interpose the bishop or the knight which is taken for example knight, knight f1 Rook takes f1, bishop takes f1, and queen f1 is checkmate. So Kasparov took the lead and didn't relinquish the lead again. And eight games later, he was the 13th world champion in the history of the game. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give the thumbs up, please subscribe, and if you want to know, the short story that I refer to, which is also on the internet, let me know and I'll in the comments and I'll send you the link to it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.